All right, so for language learning, and for me in particular with Chinese, if you are following an input-based method like me, you are going to be consuming a lot of content, a lot of movies, a lot of TV shows. And when you are a beginner or intermediate, it's going to be really helpful to have subtitles for that content so that you can have something to follow along with, look up words, etc. Now, one problem that you're going to run into with some content is that it may either not have subtitles at all, or it might have subtitles that are not matching with the sound. As in, the people and the voices will be saying one thing, and then the subtitles might be saying something completely different. And this is because, especially for dubbed content, the producers of this content are often using a different translation team for the dubbing versus the subtitles. Now, why is that? Well, we could get into that at another time, but I wanna spend this video talking about what I think is the solution to this problem. And for me, that has been to generate my own subtitles for any video content using AI. Now, there are lots of AI solutions I found out there, and they all differ in terms of accuracy and ease of use. But the one that I wanna show you is one called Subtitle Edit, which is the one that I found to simply be the best to use. So in this video, I am simply going to show you how to use this tool and show you a bit of the results. Now, I'm going to be doing this for the language that I'm currently learning, which is Mandarin Chinese. But I think that this works for most major languages out there. With that, let's get started. So the first step is downloading the tool. So you're gonna to go to this website, nickc.dk slash subtitle edit. I'm not really sure how to say this. I think it's a different uh, one of the Nordic languages or something, but you're gonna to go to this address and then you're gonna get this page that comes up. And then you're just gonna to go to this place that says download latest version of subtitle edit. And it's gonna take you to a GitHub page and it's gonna be intimidating. And you're gonna be like, what the hell is going on? Unless you are a techie. But don't worry, you're not gonna to have to do anything that complicated. All you need to do is click on this file that says subtitle edit setup.zip. It says that this is the Windows installer version. Now I will apologize in advance. I think this only works for Windows. There are other tools that you can use out there for Mac, but I really prefer this one. So we're just gonna go with this. So you're gonna download it. Then you're gonna open the zip file and then you're just gonna double click on this setup.exe. And I got a Microsoft Defender thing, but I'm just gonna go run anyway. I promise you it's safe. You're gonna just click through all of this. And I'm actually not gonna go through all of it because I already have it installed. But then you wanna just simply open it and you're gonna have a screen like this. Now there's a lot of stuff going on here because I think that this tool is actually used for a lot of things, including editing subtitle files as the name suggests. Uh, but the one thing that we're gonna wanna use it for is just pulling subtitles using AI. So I'll show you how to do that in a minute, but before we do that, we need to actually get our file that we are going to pull the subtitles for. And to make this easy, I am simply going to use an episode of a TV show. One of my favorite shows, Andor, it's on Disney Plus. And you can actually get TV shows like this in many languages on Disney Plus, including Mandarin Chinese. Now, how did I get a version of this onto my computer? Well, we will say that for another video, but let's just say that I have basically the video version of the first season or the first episode of Andor. And so let's open it up. Okay, and so you can see that it's playing. So this is all you need for subtitle edit. If you wanna take it a step further, actually all subtitle edit needs is an audio file. It doesn't actually even need the whole video. And so what I tend to do is actually rip the audio from the video first. It just creates a smaller file, which I think maybe is faster to run in subtitle edit. I don't know, I haven't actually really tested it, but I figured that it might be, so I usually just put the audio only. All right, and then let's go back to subtitle edit. And what you need to do is you need to go to video, and then the only option we're going to use in all these menus is this one called audio to text using Whisper. Uh, now, what is Whisper? Whisper is actually the open AI language model that can do as it kind of suggests audio to text. And so there's many other speech to text models out there. Uh, this one looks like it has another one that I've never heard of, but I usually just do whisper. And then you're gonna have some options when you get to this page. Uh, the first is the engine. And I haven't really tried all of these, but the one that I typically use is just this Purview's Faster Whisper XXL. And I just chose this one because I think this one has been optimized to run faster than some of the other ones. Though it could be that some of these other engines are actually faster. If you try this out and figure out that one of them is faster, let me know in the comments down below because I would love to start using that one instead. But anyway, you choose Purview's Faster Whisper XXL, and then you wanna choose your language. For me, it's Chinese. And then you wanna choose your model. And so this is basically just the language model that is gonna be used. I usually just do the large V3 because I think that the bigger and more kind of recent the model is, typically the more accurate the subtitles. Again, I don't know if that always holds, 
because I think that also larger models can tend to take a longer time to run. But I've typically just gone with the large just to get the most accuracy and I haven't found the speed to be too slow. All right, and then all you're gonna do is you have this area down here to input files. You can actually input more than one file at a time, but we just have one file, so we'll go and grab it. I'll grab the MP3. And if you put more than one in here, it will just kind of work through each of the files and sequence. And then we're just gonna hit generate. And it's interesting, the first step was extracting audio. So it might be that this actually extracts the audio automatically. Maybe I don't actually need to be pulling the audio from the video, but who knows. But anyway, then we're just gonna be waiting on this transcribing audio to text for a while here. And unfortunately, there's really no great progress bar to show you exactly how far along you are. But when it's done, it'll pop up a window. And so we just gotta wait. So I will pause the video and come back when it is done. All right, and it looks like it is done. And so this is like a 40 minute episode or something like that. And it took about six or seven minutes to run. So not too bad. So we'll just click okay. And then we'll go back to our folder and you'll see that it just puts an SRT file, which is a standard subtitles file in the same folder as whatever audio or video you pulled it from. At least that's how I have my default settings set. So you click this open and you'll see that this is just a normal subtitles file. But the real test is seeing how well it actually works. So for that, we'll just click open the video and I'm just gonna go through a few clips and see where it looks like it's either matching up or whether there might be mistakes just to give you an idea of how this actually looks with the output. Okay, and you know, for instance, at this one, four minutes in, I think that it got this exactly right. So it actually did pretty good. And the one thing that, maybe I'll just use this as an area to talk about some mistakes that it might make. So if you don't know Chinese, this is not gonna make much sense, but everything up to this character is kind of like a standard Chinese word. And then these three characters here for Kanali. So Kanali is like a planet and this episode of Andor. And this is not a real Chinese word, but one thing that it does is that it attempts to transliterate any character names or place names or any made up words using whatever kind of the closest Chinese character is. And so one thing that I do notice in subtitle edit is that sometimes it might use vastly different transliterations for the same like planet name or the same character name in different parts of the subtitle. This is probably just an issue with Chinese only, but I imagine you might actually find this with other languages where you just might have words that are kind of not standard words and it might just kind of like mess up the spelling or mess up the transliteration of those specifically. It's not too bad. And in this case, like I, I can tell what it means and this might actually even be the right transliteration. Let's check ChatGPT actually and see what the more standard transliteration for that one is. What is the standard Chinese transliteration for the planet Kanali and Andor? And at least this one, it says it's using a slightly different transliteration than what is being used here, but it's okay. It doesn't really matter. So let's check a couple other lines. Okay, I just went through a couple more minutes and so far everything seems very accurate as far as what I can hear. Sometimes there's more mistakes. Let me try to scrub through and find an area where there actually is mistakes so I can show you what that can look like. <laughs> Okay, so that's one area where there were some mistakes. So the, the first thing is that um, kind of this first line here, it doesn't show any subtitle for that one at all, which is, I, I understood where it said, so it's fine, but it just kind of completely missed out on that one. And then if we keep going, okay, so that entire line also is not here at all. It has, and you'll see here, it has some like weird English something nonsense here. But this, this whole first line here is not anything. And then it just missed out on the line that was just spoken. Okay, and that last line, it kind of picks it back up and it's correct again. And kind of corresponds to this second line here. So you'll see that it is not perfect, but it actually, I think about 90, 95% of the time, it's fine. And what I found that even though it's not 100% accurate, it is still way, way better than nothing. And sure, if you're at a beginner level, I guess that there are some chance that you may kind of incorrectly learn some things, but usually when there is a mistake, it will be pretty obvious. 
because the sentence won't make sense at all or there'll be just garbage like here. And I think it's actually a pretty good test of your language skills to notice the mistakes and pick up on the mistakes. So in some ways it's almost a feature and not a bug. I will still say it's a bug. It'd be better if it was just completely accurate, but it's not the end of the world. All right, and that will do it for this video. If you liked it, hit the like button so that others can find this and subscribe for more. Peace.